irresistible atoms. Step 1. For this fly, we're going to use a standard number 12 dry fly hook and some 6 aught black tying thread. We're just going to cover the shank of the hook with some thread so we get a good base. Step 2. We're going to use moose mane here, although moose body would probably be a, a much better material just because the fiber is a little bit shorter and uh, a little bit smoother, not so crinkly as this is. And tends to be a little bit darker color too. Try and restack them so that the tips are a little more even before you put them in the hair stacker. It'll be a lot easier to use. I notice you're putting the, uh, the tip in then first. Is that how it always goes with those? You pretty much always put the tip end of any material in the hair stacker first. There you have it. You want the tail to be about the distance of the hook shank, maybe a little bit longer. Moose hair is quite stiff. It doesn't really compress very much, so you'll see that tying it in here. Lay it right down the whole hook shank, right on top of the hook, so none twists underneath, otherwise you get an, a flared tail. Step three. So now the whole body of the fly is going to be spun deer hair, so you want to try and choose some uh, good quality deer hair, something that's quite hollow and... Uh, which will help you spin it. Get rid of all the under fur, otherwise it's not going to spin well at all. And turn the turn the hair around so that you don't have a, a big long, long hairs exposed sticking out the end of the hook. It'll be a lot easier to spin. You'll see that it gets stuck in the hook cap as it is, like that. And wrap your thread towards the tail of the hook and back through it, only one time. Step four. Add another clump of combed out hair just to tighten up the body a bit, make it a little more dense. I notice you're winding backwards a little bit and then coming forward. I'm winding backwards because some of the hairs got tied down and you don't really want to wrap over some of the hairs that have already been squished down. Step five. Now what we're going to do is trim the body. You want it to be tapered back towards the tail of the fly. Do the best you can. It's not super important to have it really neat, but you want a bit of a taper so it tapers back towards the tail. Get rid of all those loose odds and ends. Try not to cut your thread off. Step six. For the wings in this fly, we're going to be using a, a hackle tipped wing, which is a little bit harder to tie in than most. And you want to use a rooster, rooster uh, neck hackle because the tips tend to be a little bit rounder than a saddle hackle. And we're going to make the wings about the length of the hook, of the hook shank. We're going to expose some of the quill, which is what we're going to tie onto the hook. And tie them in individually to be a lot easier. Now, do you tie the, uh, the feather with the uh, curve facing out from the body on, on each feather? Correct, that's exactly how you want it to do. Okay. You're tying down just the quill. You don't want to be tying onto the fibers because it'll cause the feather to squish together in all your fibers. It won't be a proper shaped wing then. Try and get those fibers out of the way. It's going to take a bit of practice in positioning. You keep twisting them with your finger and moving them around. You want to make sure that the base is securely tied down though, otherwise the wings will pull out. A little bit of figure eighting and pulling and twisting will do it. Step seven. Now the first hackle we're going to tie in, this is a saddle hackle, a dry fly quality saddle hackle to match a number 12 hook. We're going to tie it in so the underside of the feather is facing up. I noticed that there was a very short piece of quill on the end of that, you're almost right into the uh, hackle uh, fibers. Yeah, you want to just make sure there's just enough quill to tie down nice and neat and tidy without having too much exposed. These two other feathers that we're going to tie in are neck hackles, uh, number 12 dry fly quality neck hackle. This kind of gives you an idea that you can use wet neck or saddle. Again with the bottom of the feather facing up or towards you. Why is that? 
That helps to repel the water. The fibers face in the direction in which will help repel water. So when the uh, fly is sitting on the water and you're pulling it into yourself rather than diving under or exactly. soaking it all up, it's exactly. going to stay on the top. Things as your fly is going to be half brown, half grizzly, you kind of want to put just a couple turns on either side of the wing. That way you don't use up the whole space with just one color hackle. If they're short like this, I usually wrap the two of them together. A little bit easier and quicker. It's a good example here, actually. You can see a nice long hackle compared to the two short ones. You'll get all the wraps out of the, the grizzly hackle, and you only need one. If you can find good quality saddle, it's probably a better choice than using neck hackle. There you are, a couple turns on either side. Tie it off. Try and pull your thread a little bit into the body of the fly. That way it'll help keep the eye clear. You can see how I'm pulling back. Now try and tie off. Create a bit of a head. Use your thumbnail to push the head back so it keeps the eye clear. Step eight. Now come in and whip finish it. Do you use a lot of wraps on the head to whip finish, or is it as minimal it as possible? Yeah. Anything over four wraps is four on is enough. Sometimes to build the head, I'll use more. Again, just snip some of those other fibers away. I notice we're not gluing anything here. Is that a good idea? or does It's it a good matter? idea to glue the fly, always. Sometimes it's nice to tie a few before you open the bottle of glue. Get a, get a batch made. Exactly. 